Hello, everybody. What is going on? My name is Colonies, and I'm here with... Kidlot. Welcome. And today, we're going to be doing a recap of the Nintendo Direct at E3, uh, the Nintendo Digital event that we just witnessed and that everyone just witnessed. That kind of blew us all the way. I thought it was very good. And we're here to share our thoughts on the games that were announced. So, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Do you want to start off with the first game? Sure, let's go ahead. First thing we're going to talk about is the Amiibo. This is the figurine platform that has been speculated for a long time, that has been hinted at by Nintendo and uh, introduced with Smash Brothers in a very cool way. Um, I think that this is actually going to be a really big moneymaker for Nintendo, and while I can understand why some people are very skeptical about the entire thing, I think this is actually going to be very beneficial, and it's going to be kind of cool, and something new. What do you think about it? I think it's going to be a hit, honestly. I mean, there's a lot of times, yeah, you're right, like some people are skeptical, like when somebody introduces something new, they're like, oh, is this just kind of like a gimmick or something like that? But, you know, like, if you look at other games, like I've been talking a lot, it's like, you know, it, some things really just catch on really hard. I mean, you can say the same thing about uh, Skylanders, for example. That's going huge for Activision right now, mm -hmm. and it's like almost the same premise. In fact, I think Nintendo even said that they're going to be doing some special <laughs> like Wii U deal or something with them, where Skylanders you don't even, probably don't even need a portal for that game. If you want to play it on Wii U, you can just do it directly with the NFC gamepad feature. So, I, I think it's I think it's going to be one of those things like I don't know like Beanie Babies, like these kind of like. I don't know what I don't want to call them like fads, but right, like right. new, like new, like I don't know, like a, a social revolution sort of stuff where like these things will like just like pop off the shelves. It's gonna go crazy. I mean, I'm gonna we are, we're pretty much guaranteed we're gonna buy every single figurine. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We're suckers for that kind of thing, and I feel like so is everybody else. And this is really gonna draw in a lot of like smaller kids into the Wii U right now. Because if you think about it, it's kind of contradictory towards Nintendo's image. Because a lot of people think of Nintendo as like the kitty company, but I think that like right now it's just a lot of older people which is kind of ironic coming from me, but it's like a lot of older gamers on Wii U right now, and I think this will help draw in the younger market. Yeah, definitely. And, I mean, it's not just, like, uh, you know, just a figurine. There's, like, a, a metagame as well, like, leveling up your character or something like that. So mm -hmm. there's definitely an incentive to, like, you know, spend time with the figurine, and it's just more value in that way than just, like, oh, it's just, like, a little plastic figure that's just, like, oh, you know, we can just... You could just they could have just given that to me anyway. It's kind of, like... You know, there's more functionality to it, especially too when you can bring it to other people's houses and stuff like that. So I'm pretty excited. One thing that they haven't said, or I don't think they've said, is a price point for this. Well, last time I went to Best Buy, I saw like these like little Disney uh, figurines that you can scan, and they're about like twelve dollars each though, which is, in my opinion, kind of steep for a figurine. Especially that is kind of expensive. Yeah. But, but with like the in-game functionality, then it makes a little more sense. But twelve dollars is a little not much. But we'll yeah, see. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like you could dev it could get you know the price could definitely get up there, especially if there's like ten, twelve figurines, and then more is going to be obviously coming on the way with different stuff, with, with different games, of course. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they're saying stuff like Smash Brothers. They're they're going to be supporting Mario Kart. You know, like oh yeah, Mario Kart. An already released title will be using this. So I wonder how soon they're going to be putting that out. Yeah, definitely. So it's. It's it's a good idea. Still, some questions to be asked, but I think honestly, this could like, this could be like 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 I was saying like Nintendo's like side meta game where like they could just create so much popularity for their franchises. Honestly, with this system. Right, right, right. Okay, so I think we need to move on to something else that is also very big news. That is Zelda Wii U and the little teaser that we were shown and the uh, open world talk. So I'm gonna let you start this one. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, to me, for a Zelda game, you know, when uh, Onuma was saying, like, we want to be a different Zelda game, and so on and so forth, you know, I kind of appreciate that. I guess in some sense, you know, we're, we're content producers as well on YouTube. We want to kind of, like, always, you know, have revisions to what we do on YouTube, make things better, and so on and so forth. So, you know, I can understand where he's coming from, where he's trying to z uh, change the Zelda franchise to make it more fresh, and, you know, he, you know, he did that whole talk about being in this open landscape and it's calmed down and that's kind of like mm -hmm. the whole theme of Zelda where it's like okay crazy stuff happens in calm areas and neighborhoods and so on and so forth so like in terms of him talking about that sort of stuff you know I agree in terms of like gameplay slash graphics they're kind of going a little bit with the Skyward Sword I don't know if you have anything to say about that well yeah I don't know it's like when I when it was shown I think that 
it was at least it is an well I'm not trying to like bash on Wind Waker at all. I think Wind Waker is a fantastic game. But I feel like if they would have went with that graphic style again, then it would have been a little controversial and people would have, you know, been a little shy to the idea of this new open world Zelda. So I feel like they kind of picked the right thing here, because if you look at something right now, I saw this from another YouTuber, this is a very valid point. If you look at Wind Waker vs. Twilight Princess right now, which game looks better? And the original Wind Waker on GameCube vs. Twilight Princess on GameCube, it's Wind Waker, because the graphic style holds up much better. So maybe in 10 to 15 years, this game will look better with its current graf- graphic style than something like a Twilight Princess really hard edge, realistic graphic style would. Yeah, I mean, I would disagree with that YouTuber. I would say that, you know, there's a big difference between 480p low shaders and, you know, 720p to 1080p, you know, high graphics and and textures and stuff like that for Wii. I think the reason why Twilight Princess looks bad is because it's on the GameCube with low processing power. I mean, we've seen for Wii U, Mario Kart, like, they can do it. So, I mean, (laughs) a good good looking graphics game nowadays, I mean, if you want to bring the whole idea of, like, standing the test of time i think you know the hd super realistic zelda that they brought at the original e3 2012 if they came with that graphic style like they would you know they would have no problem like selling that or marketing that and and it would be like a quote-unquote masterpiece because of just how you know realistic and beautiful it looks i think honestly like i would have preferred that actually i'm gonna say Mm -hmm. that right now actually i would agree with you i would prefer that too but what they're doing right now i don't think is a bad thing yeah it's not that but it's not a bad at all it's not bad uh -uh. at all it's not it could be worse let's just put that out there and plus like i mean we're not trying to bash on this we're not trying to down this game at all it looks absolutely amazing i love the idea of an open world zelda i love the idea of breaking barriers in the franchise that haven't been broken before and i think they've been testing it a lot you know with uh with the link between worlds, how you mm-hmm. can choose which dungeon you want to go to, and stuff like that. Exactly. They're really, it's all building up to this game. This is the killer app for Wii U that we're waiting for. So, yep, let's move on to the next game. Okay, what do you want to talk about next? Uh, I'll say t- I'll say a quick note about Pokemon uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. So they did show a trailer. It was kind of awesome, you know, a lot of like pre-rendered uh, cinematics, like CG and stuff like that. You know, it looked great. Um, in terms of gameplay, it honestly looks like Pokemon X and Y 2, or, or something like that. If you didn't really tell me the name of the game, and you compared trailers, you would, like, see almost, like, you know, really, uh, very close similarities to both of them. I'm just saying, like, you know, that's what I saw. I guess, you know, of course, they're going to be using this new, uh, game engine that they developed for Pokemon X and Y, but in terms of, like, what they showed, it was pretty awesome. New Mega Evolutions, there was, like, Latios flying in the beginning, you know, really popular legendary Pokemon. You know, they had, like, you know, they showed, uh, places in the game, Rustboro City, Fortree City, we had Roxanne as a gym leader, Archie, Maxi, you know, Team Magma, Team Aqua leaders, Steven Stone. So, that you know, it's kind of nice to see, like, those little GBA sprites, like, come to life like that. So that was pretty awesome. And then, of course, the whole fanfare of Mega Evolutions at the end. So I'm, I'm really excited for it. I'm mostly excited, you know, not just because of, like, you know, the graphics and it's being re- uh, remade and stuff like that, but just like the fondness of you know the, those GBA games that I really had. So I, I just can't wait to play them again and just kind of do service to the game in that way. Okay, yep, that's a uh, really good point. Okay, so let's move on next to Mario Maker. What do you make of this game? Mario Maker. I mean, when I when I saw this, I'm like, I don't know if it could work or not I, in terms of like it being popular. I mean. I, I know there's like mods out there and like hacks with different Mario games. So I guess it is popular in that sense, but I, I think like I, I don't know if like a younger kid would be able to like pick this game up and make their levels and like I don't know, share it to the world. I, I don't know I don't know I don't know what audience this is for. How about you how about you chime in? What do you think? Okay, so here's what I think. Honestly, I've seen okay, so I've had a lot of experience with like younger cousins and people like that. When you say about the younger market Honestly, I think this is something that younger audiences will really, really enjoy. And it also has that touch of nostalgia where, like, because I was looking at my Twitter feed when this was going on when they announced it, and everyone was, like, freaking out about this. I was like, okay, I like the idea of Mario Maker. I think it's cool. I'll get the game. But it's not that big of a deal to me. But to a lot of these people that grew up on, like, the NES and stuff like that, that they're trying to, like, attract that older audience, then I definitely think they have it with this game. Because there's just something about like you making like because it's like i saw one guy say that you know this was my dream at 10 years old playing super mario bros on the nes to design a game right design a mario game like this and you kind of get to do that and i think it's really cool and i think my favorite part about the entire game is the fact that you can switch from the new super mario bros graphic style 
to the old Mario Bros. graphics style. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, that's really yeah. I think yeah, that's that's, that's, that's a good feature. Um, okay. but I guess final thought. I mean, it's just like maybe I'm just a little biased. I I like playing games than rather than making them. I guess. <laughs> yeah. I don't know because it's it's kind of the same thing with like for me. I'm just not that interested to be honest. Like Mario and Donkey Kong, like you know, making a level and then sharing it. I don't know. I guess that's just not my cup of tea. I'm kind of more of that mainstream like like core game, like core single player game, like. Yep. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a little biased, but I just, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see how it does because I, I don't really, I can't really like predict what's going to happen in terms of like popularity. You know, I'm sure a lot of older kids, like you said, are going to want to play this because of nostalgia. You know, maybe the newer kids would want to, um, you know, make their own levels. But I, I don't know, like as well, like with the depth of the game, if it's just making levels and trading them with each other. I think that's it, actually, and I don't know if this is going to be then, a full sixty dollars yeah, exactly. game or that's, not. That's 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 what I was kind of hinting at too. It's probably not going to be a sixty dollar game if that's the truth. It's probably like but a honestly, 10, 15 dollar game. But honestly, the more games for Wii U, the better. Just the more games they put out, just to avoid that drought. I think I, you know, any game is a good game at this point for Wii U. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so let's move on to one of the more interested um, things that were announced, and something we both have a little bit of split opinions on. That's Splatoon, the new title, um, the new IP for Nintendo. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and start off this one. I think this game looks really awesome. I think that it's great that Nintendo is trying something new. Because, you know, every once in a while, Nintendo tries something new. And I feel like we've had a lot of Mario lately. I feel like we've had a lot of Zelda lately. We've had a lot of these kind of main franchises. And I think it's time for something new. And I think this game is exactly that. It looks like a ton of fun. It looks like something... It's a multiplayer game, which is good. And something that you can interact with other players and 4v4 online play, and I, I don't know, it looks really innovative, it looks really cool, and I'm really looking forward to seeing more of this um, game at the Treehouse presentation. Yeah, same, same to me. I thought it was like a, you know, a cute little game with the graphics and just like the whole gameplay and such. Um, I, you know, it's great. I mean, it's great that Nintendo is kind of embracing these indie developers, but it's always that kind of worry because, you know, indie stuff, like, let's be honest, doesn't really... It, it gets overshadowed in some sense, you know, by Nintendo's other franchises. They mm -hmm. always have, like, a special segment in their Nintendo Directs and their E3 press conferences where, you know, they have, like, this, like, you know, lots of little games, like, you show, like, the indie games. Kind of the same thing with, people, with PlayStation and Microsoft, you know, they're trying to do this whole initiative of, like, let's support indie games, which is great, but... Uh, it has to have some more, like, punch, you know what I'm saying? To have, like, that well, lasting effect, like, where people will actually okay. pick it up. Yeah, that's actually true, because I feel like this could be very similar to Titanfall, and the fact where people played it, and they loved it, and then it kind of just died out. And, um, because, I mean, if you look right now, no one is playing Titanfall. It's kind of sad, but, uh, the thing, I don't know, it's, it's all going to depend on, because I feel like Nintendo just has that ability. They just have that trick up their sleeve that makes me get on Mario Kart 8, like, at least for an hour every day, or something like that, you know? It's like, there's something there that gets you that replay value, so we'll see how it does. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on next to Star Fox. The um, big... So this one came with a little controversy because actually 20 minutes before the Nintendo uh, digital event started, Time Magazine actually leaked an interview with Miyamoto that announced the new Star Fox game. And at the very end of the digital event, Nintendo actually showed, the, uh, showed a little teaser of the Star Fox game. The TV was kind of blurred out. Miyamoto never said what he was working on. And they're supposed to be showing it off like a little bit later today or maybe even later in the week not 100 percent sure but at this point we all know it's star fox so yeah do you got any thoughts yeah i mean um i, I can't say that it's kind of like when you know when you're a child you you skip on some games just because like I, you know there's no real social presence there you know the internet was kind of like not that big you know back in the day so, yeah you know there's kind of like this like sectioned off like idea of of games of, of experiences that you had in the past so you know you play some games maybe you got lucky in some sense that i got to experience like super mario 64 you know kirby 64 all those different games zelda but then you you, you miss some games and then it's it's funny because you go into the future and then you're like oh what about this game what about this game and i'm like oh i, I never played Glover I never played yeah, other st you yeah. know other stuff like that and unfortunately for me Star Fox was kind of like that I know there was Star Fox on the SNES but I didn't that's not the first system that I owned it was you know I was in the N64 era 
you're probably what GameCube era or something like that. Yeah, and I actually had Star Fox Adventures, which was which is considered to be the worst Star Fox of all time, and rightfully so. But actually, back in the day, I actually used to love that game because you don't know any different. The, because that's one thing I love about childhood memories is the fact that you don't didn't have the internet to decide your opinion for you. Mm-hmm. So like you know, while most people will bash on Star Fox Adventures, I had fun that game as a kid, and I'm really excited to see what they'll do with Star Fox now because Miyamoto said that he wants this to be different. He said that, you know, like, um, he said, uh, he, this is a quote from, I saw from the IGN show or whatever it is. They said, uh, Star Fox 64 was like Star Fox the TV show. This is going to be like Star Fox the movie. <laughs> That's great. I mean, yeah, it's that, it's that kind of idea, you know. Um, I, I want to play it. I want to I try new franchise, especially if, you know, Miyamoto, like, has this dearly to his heart. Yeah, of course, I think yeah. it's a good service to, like, try out the game and, like, you know, do the whole gameplay videos and just, just try out the game and just see how it is. Um, but this is kind of like the other point as well, like trying to bring back Star Fox. It seems like there's like a tier list of Nintendo's franchises. Of course, on the top, Mario, Zelda, and Pokemon. And then you have like these mid-tier characters. I'm not saying the games are bad at all. That is completely yeah, not what I'm saying. Yeah. But it's like the priority list of like how easy they are to sell. Then you have the middle like Donkey Kong, Yoshi, Kirby. And that's kind of what I hinted at in my other video that I made where it's like they first bring out their first main characters and then they keep kind of going nope, back to the train. that's exactly what so they're this, doing. You know, so they had, they had Kirby, they had Donkey Kong, Tropical Freeze, you know, stuff like that. And now this is the time where like Captain Falcon is, is, is his turn to come back. Star Fox is his turn to come back. You know, he is going to come back you know hopefully yeah. metroid is like the next one to come back but i think like with those games they need to they're like so worried that they need to come out with like kind of a gimmick to sell the games honestly that's the whole point like i remember when they tried to come out with metroid for uh wii you know they, they tried this whole new team ninja style like side scroll it was pretty bad like not a lot of people liked it but that's kind of what the gimmick was and you know they had all these crazy cutscenes and stuff like that and so on and so forth. Well, very honestly, cinematic I I feel like Nintendo learned from their lesson there, and I think that this is going to be a more... No, but I think I think the gimmick is like the Wii U. It's, I'm not saying a okay, gimmick no, as a bad thing, it's... but like a, like a feature that they're trying to sell with the game. So definitely for Star Fox, it's this whole like gamepad, like racer kind of thing. Like, oh, I'm like actually flying on R-Wing with the Wii U gamepad, you know, yeah, that kind yep. of stuff. So that's that's kind of like, I'll, I'll use the word gimmick or, or feature that... They're, they're going to try really hard to try to sell for Star Fox, in my opinion. And that's kind of like what, they, th- what they're thinking, what they need to do if they want to bring back older franchises. Because it's not, it's not as easy for them, what I'm trying to say. You know, it's, not, it's easier to sell a Mario game than it is to sell like a Kirby game or a Donkey Kong game or a, yep. or a Star Fox game. So that's just kind of my opinions on the matter. Okay, so you know, I think it's time to move on. Let's move on to Hyrule Warriors, the game beats from well, the mashup game from Dynasty Warriors, Warriors and Zelda. Yeah, I don't know. You can start first. Okay, so what I think about this game, I think it's definitely going to be pretty interesting. I'm glad they announced um, that. I like the title Hyrule Hyrule Warriors, so I'm glad they stuck with that title. Um, and I also think it's really cool that you're allowed or that you can play with Zelda and Impa. I think that's really cool. Mm-hmm. I, th- I was kind of afraid it was just going to be Link, and it's just like, okay, we're just going to hit things with our sword, and it's just the same thing over and over and over again. So I'm glad they showed a little more diversity, some different level design, some new characters, stuff like that. And I think this is definitely going to be a um, good game. I think I'm going to enjoy it. I'll definitely pick this one up. Yeah, that's also another idea that Nintendo, I think they're, they're doing this more, like especially with that Fire Emblem, Cross, you know, that other game, and Hyrule Warriors, they're, like, giving their IPs to other companies so that they, the other companies can, like, make the games for them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that's, that's a good. smart that's idea. That's good. That's a smart idea so they can develop more games and have more games in the pipeline for the people to enjoy. And that's kind of what I feel like they're trying to do with Hyrule Warriors, you know, they're, they're like, hey, here's the Zelda IP, you know, our intellectual property, make a game and we'll sell it and, you know, we'll, we'll do some sort of deal. And that's kind of what they did. So far, just from the gameplay and even from the footage, like, before when it was first released, revealed it's it's kind of like that feet uh, beat em up uh, style gameplay kind of like a mm-hmm. fighter you know what i'm saying so yeah. you know there's a lot of fighting melee and elements and stuff like that it's more about you know fighting rather than the story so yeah. um I, I don't know I, it, it to me um I, I have to see it in context you know i have to play the game and like i don't know if there's like a storyline associated with it or something like that but 
I, I don't I don't I don't know. It's gonna be interesting to see what, what it turns out to be because I don't know if they're gonna actually put a storyline. You know, there's gonna be like cutscenes and stuff like that. Because at yeah. that point, it might just be a, another Zelda game. You know what I'm saying? Um, so. Well, actually, I doubt that. I think this game is more towards a very like niche audience. Um, that Nintendo kind of you know, like I said, they're trying to expand their their audience. You know, they're trying to get into. And I think it's also very good that they're abandoning that we got to do it all ourselves mentality and kind of lending their IPs like Zelda out to a very treasured IP from Nintendo out to this company um, to, you know, make this crossover game. Just more review games for, for the better, more diverse games means a more div- diverse audience. So, good job, Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> just one okay. final word. I'm just saying, like, I, I want to see how they're going to come out with the game, like, and, and what sort of style. Like, is there going to be, like, single-player elements, or is it more just, like, you know, melee, just hop into the game and just, like, kick some ass, you know? That's I, what I, I think. That's what I yeah. think. Okay. Oh, all right, so let's move on to Mario Party 10, or, uh, you know, commonly called now Bowser Party 10. So I was going to say a few words on this one. I think this is definitely an interesting take on the Mario Party series, because, you know, 10 games in, I think everybody can admit Mario Party is getting kind of stale. The common idea of, you know, just playing this, these many games, and they, they can only have so many ideas for many games, that I think it's so good that they're finally showing that the Wii U gamepad is a huge innovation factor to every series they have, and especially Mario Party, because they announced that um, it has... You can use Bowser, so, like, one player can use Bowser while everyone else is, like, you know, rolling around the board or whatever. And he can uh, control the mini games. he can, like, you know, torture the players in the game, stuff like that. And I think it's definitely a very good um, idea to take this franchise and kind of expand it to new reaches. To, you know, kind of maybe put some fresh air in there, because it's kind of dead right now. So, yep, that's it for Mario Party. Any words you have on that one? Yeah, I mean, for Mario Party, it was it's a weird one because it's for Wii U, and they don't technically support four game pads, so they can't just make a game where it's like, okay, here's four game pads, you know, twist all your game pads, use a stylus on all four game pads. You can't have that traditional sense of Mario Party with the controllers that they offer. You know, they have like these kind of like uh, a, a smattering pod of like different controllers that you can use. So they mm-hmm. had to they had to like kind of you know take their own idea and, and do it a different way. By having that like one main character, it's kind of like um, you know, in the sense like uh, Nintendo Land, where like you know that Mario and Toad game. It's like one yeah. one master player and then like four sub players that can play that kind of idea. So they had right, to do that right. idea with Mario Party. That's why they introduced this whole Bowser thing. You know, mess around with other players, and obviously you're gonna be using the gamepad. You're like you're the master player trying to mess up the other players using the other controllers. That's kind of like the whole point. Um, in terms of like you know gameplay and staleness of the franchise. I would say that Mario Party 3DS or Mario Party Island Tour was actually kind of a letdown because the mini games were, were kind of lame, the the boards were kind of shallow. So and of I course, I never played it, so I wouldn't have an opinion on that. Yeah, it, I, I, it wasn't that good in my opinion. It was you know, Mar- uh, previous Mario Parties were way better in terms of like that sort of stuff. I mean, that's just on them. They have to make good mini games. They have to make good boards. I mean, they're doing the whole thing where it's like you know, n- everyone's driving in the same car. I hate that. I really don't like that. Yeah, I, I like Mario Party 4, you know, like... Mario Party 4, Mario Party 2, and Mario Party 1. But this isn't like a nostalgia fest or anything. We're just giving our opinions on the game. So, yeah, Mario Party 10, it looks okay. I'm interested to see what they'll do with it. Show more footage of it, you know. And that's why I love that they're doing this, Um, you know, developers... Uh, streams and stuff like that, so we can see more of these games, more gameplay, actual gameplay, unlike um, some of Nintendo's rivals. So yeah, I think <laughs> that's a, uh, I think it's pretty cool. All right. Okay, so we got two more games here. We got Yoshi Woolly World, a very interesting title and a very interesting looking game. Do you want to start off on this one? I mean, I don't have much to say. Um, this is supposed to be like a, a spiritual, I guess, successor to a Kirby game on the DS. Like, what is it, Canvas Curse or something like that? No, 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 no. We're talking about Yoshi Woolly World. That's uh, Yoshi's ep- or Kirby's epic yarn for Wii. So it's like a it's Kirby's epic yarn, but like it's a Yoshi game. So they're taking Kobe, Kirby's epic yarn's idea. Um, yeah, kind of. They're using the same like, graphic style, but with like a Yoshi twist on it. Okay, yeah, exactly. I I thought. I thought they said they were trying to take inspiration from a DS game, but maybe that, I'm that's I'm for uh, that's for the next game, Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. Oh, okay, yeah, of course. Well, okay, so the so the yarn one, okay, for you know Yoshi's yarn. I mean, I, when they were talking about it, they're like, 
you know, how could we make wool and yarn like exciting? You know, like crumbles. Or, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it, it was kind of funny to me, like the way they were trying to, like, I don't know, just, sure. justify their gameplay design. I, I don't know what to say, honestly. I really don't know what to say. It's, it's like, it, it wouldn't. It would kind of be the same to me if it was Kirby's uh, Yarn Two or something like that. It, it's just a Yoshi game. Whatever they want to do with it, I guess they right. do with it. I guess they're just trying to rely on the cutesy factor of it. You know, mm -hmm. good, it's it's a good art style. You know, and so on and so forth, but. I don't. I don't know. It, usually, that sort of stuff is a hit or miss. I mean, I've seen like the new Yoshi's Island game come out for 3DS. Some people didn't like that just because of you know the way they presented the game. So it, it could be a hit or miss depending on you know what they do. It's more or less on on their gameplay decisions rather than like you know this whole yarn kind of you know graphic style. So it, it's pretty much all up to them on what they do with the game. Right. What I think. I have some interesting thoughts about this game. I think that it's um. It's it's not it's not the for, it's not supposed to like compete against like New Super Mario Bros. U or anything like that in terms of the platformer. I think it's more of a it's got like the cutesy factor to it. Like you said, it's supposed to be a very relaxing, chill game. They said anything, you know? It's not. They said you know Mario is all about getting to the end of the level within a time mm -hmm. limit with challenging platforms stuff like that. Whereas this game is just kind of a relaxed kind of type of game. You know, explore the world. Look at the graphic style, pull apart like every piece of yarn, watch it all fall apart, stuff yeah, like that. That's you know, definitely it's, true. It's just like a, it's like an experience more than like I would equate, I would equate it to like the movie like Gravity or something where like you know it's more of an experience than a really, really like challenging depth, like a really in depth game. You know, it's just kind of there. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're sure. right. <laughs> you're right because I remember in in the Kirby game you couldn't die. Like there was no way to die in the game actually. Yep. Yeah. So it is like, yeah, you're right. It is that experience having game? I, I don't know. I, to me, if, though, if you're going to give that sort of game, maybe the full price tag is not something that you want to do. But I you know, disagree with you on that one. They're spending, I, they're spending a lot of time on the development, though, of the game. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, I, well, I'm, I mean, I know tons of people. I never actually played the game, but I know tons of people love Kirby's Epic Yarn. I actually watched a Let's Play of it, of Sean Connery. But um, actually. I don't know. A lot of people love Kirby's Epic Yarn, so I'm excited to play Yoshi Woolly World and experience it for the first time myself. Okay. Okay, so the last game we have is Kirby and the Rainbow Curse, a very surprise game from Nintendo. No one actually expected this announcement. There was no nothing on like the fake leaks and stuff like this about this. It was it just came kind of out of you know left field as a very surprising, but you know. You know, well, well, welcomed game. Like I said before, the more Wii U games, the better. If we can just keep getting these games out and, you know, using Nintendo's franchises, I think it's good. So, do you have any thoughts on this game? I mean, it's stylus input heavy, right? Yeah. So, you know, I guess, you know, in some sense, they're, you know, they're trying to develop the gamepad uh, a little bit more. They're trying to, like, I, I don't know. Which I don't want to. good. Yeah, it's good. Uh, you know, some people might say, like, oh, it's kind of, like, an excuse to use the gamepad, you know, with the stylus and stuff like that. I mean, we, we won't get into that, but um, I guess just to, like, you know, give at least some, I don't know, credibility. It seems like a lot of these games, though, are, are doing that sort of style, like this Kirby game, the Mario and uh, Donkey Kong game, you know, the uh, Mario Maker and stuff like that with the gamepad. So, in some sense, it's good that they're trying to justify, like, hey, the gamepad is a unique experience. Mm -hmm. You know, they should. I'm just saying they should do more, and that, and they are doing more, and that's great with the stylus, right. and NFC. So yeah, I mean, I, that's I feel great. like that was like a big part of Nintendo's pitch at E3. While they did show like the big games, mm -hmm. and they also showed like uh, these games where it's like, hey, the game pads. Because there was rumors that people were like saying that Nintendo needs to mm -hmm. abandon the game pad, like yeah. the Connect or whatever. And now Nintendo's kind of saying, hey, you guys. We're gonna we're gonna utilize the gamepad as a unique feature of this console. It is a selling point, and we're gonna you know make it more of a selling point because really that should be the first thing that comes to people's mind when I think of Wii U. It should be like you know this gamepad. It's in, it's innovative. It's a whole new experience for gaming. It makes it better. And right now I feel like it's kind of like it makes it inconvenient. Whereas when you get more of these type of games, that's when people start thinking, hey, the Wii, the Wii U gamepad is the selling point for this console, not just the games. You yeah, know? Def yeah, definitely. I mean, it's on them to make the games for the gamepad. You know, you're right. In some sense, it is kind of inconvenient. Like, would you rather play Mario Kart with a Pro Controller or would you rather play with the gamepad? I would play with the Pro Controller. Pro controller. I, think, yeah. I think it's more comfortable for me. Um, and, you know, the other games, you know, it's just off-screen off TV play is awesome. And, you know, believe me, I've, I've done a speed run of New Super Mario Bros. U only looking at the <laughs> gamepad. Yep. I mean, it, it's good. I use it. I use my gamepad every day, surfing the internet, you know, checking YouTube even and stuff like that. The gamepad is the gamepad's excellent. 
Um, but it's just like they need to find that one killer app where it's like gamepad is like you need to you need the gamepad to own and it, it's, it's kind of something like I don't know maybe management like micromanagement or something like that maybe I don't know I haven't really well seen it's it. got to be like the amiibo project right that's gonna make what the game that's got to make the gamepad you know like uh, an essential part of this of I, this yeah. bundle that is the Wii U but my point is like it's hard to like okay because you're bringing so many kind of like offhand ideas into one thing you have NFC coming into the gamepad and you have to like put it on your gamepad and scan it and then you have like the touchpad and then you have like this like you know moving around like a steering wheel there's like all like kind of in some sense three different weird ideas like all in one controller it's like you can only use one idea at a time that's what, what i'm trying to say is that maybe yeah you know hopefully nintendo could make a game like that can integrate all that all the sort of gamepad features to be like see that's what i feel like you know that's what would make it less less of a gimmick it's more of a gimmick if you just oh here's here's a touchpad and that's all you use oh just steer it serious you know, well steer it's a game. double-edged sword because if you think about it for that game to even be like recognized it has to be one of these big franchises right and you don't want to step on people's hearts by using a, you know, Zelda game that's, you know, Zelda gamepad where you gotta, you know, drive a, or like, you know, ride Impa with the gamepad and stuff like that. Or not Impa, wow, I just came with Epona with like the gamepad or whatever. Like, obviously, it's, you know, it's a touchy, touchy area. And I know yeah, that they definitely. actually, they're actually announcing, it was another leak from Time Magazine, good, good old Time Magazine, but they're actually announcing like two gamepad like prototype things that they're coming out with in the future that's supposed to like you know utilize yeah. the gamepad more and i'm actually excited that's why guys right now if you're watching this video go to twitch.tv slash nintendo watch the nintendo treehouse live at e3 it's going to be showing all these games in depth it's going to be showing you more things than we could even explain to you so definitely recommend doing that yep and that's just you know just our ideas on, on the gamepad you know everybody has their own opinions on the gamepad so that's pretty much it uh, you know, that's 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 all the games, right? Is that all the stuff we have on the list? Yep, that's all. Yeah, so, you know, overall, final impressions for me for E3. It, it was great, especially, you know, Nintendo's trying to be these social media tryhards now. <laughs> yes. They're trying to get, like, these, um, you know, these like, kind of viral... There's even a nod to riding dirty from Luigi in the game. They, they mm -hmm. did this whole, like, joke. Oh, no, Mario game? You know, little jokes like that, little funny stuff like I that. I love the, the whole... Mother 3 thing. Like, yeah, the, exactly. The robot chicken, a lot of versus, like, Reggie. That was so good. Yeah, a lot of robot chicken kind of, like, you know, yeah, yeah. ideas coming in I wonder if they actually that. did that. I'm, I'm actually to look that up if they actually were the ones who like produce those skits mm -hmm. yeah but i mean in terms of like nintendo like trying to like recognize or they're, they're finally recognizing that there's like an a, a social online audience now you know for the stuff for their for their games and for their their franchises you know look at smash yeah. brothers this is unheard of they would have never i mean oh, they, for they sure. were exactly i mean last what was it when evo that one evo tournament right uh -huh, when they were gonna uh -huh. ban smash I mean, they were on the brink of banning Smash from actually being streamed, and now they're holding an invitational tournament for their new Smash Bros. At E3, all, the biggest at event. At E3, in, in, invitational with all these pro players playing Melee to show off the game. It's uh, amazing, Melee, it really but, is. And, yeah. it, they're, and they're using, like, the pro commentators, too. Like, everybody's exactly. in Exactly. It's, it's not like, it's not like, oh, we're Nintendo, we're gonna do things our way, we're gonna, yeah, like, like, the control guys from everything. Yeah, like, Nintendo Minute is, like, yeah. commentating it. Like, yeah, exactly. I'm like, oh, God. We need the, we need the funny guys who stream on Twitch, who are yep. those commentators who bring the hype towards the game. Yes. Uh, and it's so great that... that they have saying, an understanding of the game deeper than most ca casual players. Someone yeah. that can explain why this guy is hanging on the edge, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's it's good, it's good. So, yeah, guys, that's our opinions on the um, Nintendo E3 conference, not really conference, but digital event 2014. I thought it was absolutely amazing. Me Definitely too. the winner of E3, hands down, was Nintendo. I would I, say so. And I think after today, they sold a lot of Wii U's. I'm just going to call that one right now. You can look that up on Nintendo Life. But, yeah, guys, um, if you're watching this on my channel, make sure to check out KidLot's channel down in the description. You're not going to be disappointed. Lots of great content over there. And, and same thing here. You know, if you're watching this on my channel, it'll be going up on both channels. Be sure to look at Colony's channel. He's a great friend of mine. Very good videos. And we're going to be doing a lot more stuff in the future, I think. So his link will be in the description of this video as well. Yep. Okay, guys. Well, that's it for us. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like, and we're out. Peace. Peace.